Hello friends, welcome to To The Point. In this session, let's discuss about disasters. What is a disaster? A disaster, it is a natural or man-made event that involves large-scale loss of life and property. The impact of such event, it may be different at different times. It depends on their magnitude as well as the nature of the environment they affect. Natural Disasters Natural disasters are of natural origin. They are geological or weather related occurrences like earthquake, landslides, volcanic eruptions, fires, floods, cyclones, tsunami, etc. Natural disasters kill thousands of people, destroy their habitats as well as their property. Man-made disasters These are exclusively of human origin. It involves man activities. Man-made disasters include explosions, war, air crashes, sinking of boats, train accidents, collapse of bridge, etc. Terrorist action of blowing up a train or building with explosives and nuclear attacks also comes under man-made disaster. Let's discuss some natural disasters. Earthquake Earthquake, it is a sudden trembling or shaking of the earth crust. An earthquake, it is caused by shifting of rock layers under the earth's surface. During earthquake, the surface of the earth, it shifts, it shakes and moves, which in turn destroys buildings and other structures of natural habitats. How earthquake is measured? Earthquakes, they begin deep below the ground. The point where the earthquake originates, it is called focus or hypocenter of the quake. The point on the surface of the earth, which is directly above the focus or hypocenter, it is known as epicenter. Seismologists are scientists who study earthquakes and they use seismograph to record and measure the motion of the ground and the location where the earthquake takes place. The magnitude, the energy released of an earthquake, it is measured by a scale called Richard scale and the intensity of the earthquake, it is measured by Mercalli scale. Magnitude of the earthquake, it is measured by Richard scale and intensity of the earthquake, it is measured by Mercalli scale. Destruction by earthquakes. Destruction of life and property, it results on account of construction of houses, roads, buildings, bridges and settlements in seismic zones or areas which are prone to earthquakes, building of dams on rivers around the seismic zones, weak and temporary houses which are not strong enough to bear the shocks. On the steep slopes, rolling and falling of objects hit the people and kill them. Cracks in the ground, it causes landslides and this in turn results in greater damage. Tsunami The word tsunami, it comes from Japanese word su which means harbor and nami which means wave. Tsunami it take place when the ocean floor shifts vertically. Usually it happens when the ocean floor faces the earthquake. So when the earthquake occurs at the bottom of the sea, then the ocean floor shifts vertically and causes tsunami. The tsunami, it can strike coast of land, uproots the tree, wipes out coastal towns and it travels hundreds of meters inland, it can flood coastal towns. A tsunami can travel 700 km per hour, but in shallow water near the coast, it gets lower and the water may rise up to 50 meters. Floods A flood occurs when water flows above and beyond its normal level or course. When this water spreads out over a floodplain, it becomes a natural disaster. Causes of floods The natural factors which cause river floods are nature of river valleys and channels, prolonged high intensity rainfall, blocking of free flow of rivers, meandering courses of rivers, and the man-made factors that cause floods are building activity and eventual urbanization, construction of bridges and reservoirs, agricultural practices, deforestation, massive erosion along the river banks which causes large-scale land decay. Impacts of the floods. Flood 
it is one of the destructive forms of natural disasters which causes huge loss of life and property flooded areas they get isolated from rest of the country economically and socially backward communities they are worsely affected by the floods and they take longer time to recover and come back to their normal leading life drought drought is defined as a shortage of water and crop failure that results when the average rainfall of an area drops far below the normal level for a long time causes of drought drought is mainly attributed to climate and soil conditions as well as increasing human and livestock population prolonged dry spells on account of climatic variations low moisture retention capacity of the soil high dry temperature the semi arid or dry lands they have very high day temperature during summer and this causes evaporation of soil moisture exploitation of ground which is drained for domestic agriculture and industrial purpose no sufficient recharging of the ground water impact of drop drop leads to shortage of water for drinking and for normal domestic needs it implies shortage of water for agriculture operations results in shortage of food fodder and employment it makes people to migrate to areas where water is available during drop lakes and ponds dry up aquatic animals lose their habitat and terrestrial organisms lose their water source several drop it results in famine that cause death of people and animals in the area avalanche the rapid downslope movement of snow and ice in the steep mountain areas is called avalanche the influence of gravity on the accumulated weight of fallen uncompacted snow or on thawing older snow leads to avalanche this may be triggered by earthquakes gunshots and the movement of animals avalanche causes loss of life and can destroy settlements roads railways and forest landslides landslide means a sudden collapse of large mass of hillside down a slope the landslide may be set off by an earthquake heavy rainfall or by crashing waves when the landslide it is in the form of a block it is known as rock avalanche in india rock slides take place in hilly states like jammu kashmir himachal pradesh and north eastern states impact of the landslides sudden landslides they can cause a great destruction across a wide area of habitable land landslides they cause floods by blocking the river channels landslide it is a recurring feature on the hills man made disaster forest fires the four main causes of forest fire are first is natural fires caused by lightning or volcanic eruption accidental fires that are caused by sparks from wheels of trains or certain locomotives fires caused due to negligence fires that are caused by cigarette stubs or matches along roadways in rural areas and along the railway lines fires are caused by agriculture and forestry activities for clearing of uncultivated land fires caused by other forms of negligence like tourist activities firing of firecrackers and rockets blasting of landmines or explosives etc arson fires are caused with the intention of destroying forestry operations or in connection with poaching or organized crime and such fires they cause a great harm to wildlife which destroy their natural habitats fire in buildings causes of fire the cause of fire hazard in buildings are given below a fire in a domestic area originates near the kitchen where there is a mechanical failure of cooking equipment due to room heaters and fireplaces within the rooms spread of waste materials like newspapers etc poor electric wiring smoking sometimes may cause fire the storage of hazardous chemicals or inflammable articles dam failures uncontrolled flood waters 
it is one of the most powerful and destructive force in nature dams that are not designed to withstand major storms will be destroyed by the floods in order to protect lives and property downstream the dam should be constructed to handle an appropriate percentage of the probable maximum flood the probable maximum flood pmf is a flood that may be expected from the most severe conditions this percentage varies according to the height of the dam size of water mass and extent and severity of damage possible on the failure of this dams causes of dam failure flood water from the storms cause the failure of dams and other structures many dam failures they cause great harm damage and sudden misfortune the consequence of dam burst are severer than those of floods strategies and plans for mitigating disaster mitigation means any action that is taken to reduce or eliminate the long term risk to human life and their property from natural disaster the basic mitigation strategy involves disaster prevention and it is carried out through community land use plans fire regulations building codes etc through the application of mitigation strategies and plans we can ensure that few people become victims of natural disaster the first and foremost step towards developing a disaster mitigation strategy is to identify the potential hazards and evaluate and assess the risk involved once the hazard identification and risk analysis phase is complete then the strategies for mitigation can be adopted by using four a's alter avert adapt or avoid the disaster altering the disaster it involves eliminating or reducing the frequency of the occurrence of a disaster averting the disaster it involves redirecting the impact way from vulnerable location by using structural devices or land treatment and which shield people and development from harm adapting to the disaster it includes modifying structures and altering design standards of the construction predefined disasters like high winds earthquakes and landslides they require special building standards and construction practices in order to reduce the vulnerability to damage avoiding the hazard it can be done by keeping people away from the hazard area or limiting development in a risk area degree of varying disaster is different for different mitigation strategies and let's discuss few of them natural disaster natural disasters they cannot be prevented but we can prepare ourselves to face it onslaught by the following mitigation measures earthquake to prevent an earthquake hazard the building should be properly designed Do not construct houses in high risk prone areas. Identify special routes before the disaster so that you can easily find your way out if needed. Develop emergency communication. In case of earthquake, move out of the building and come in open but do not panic. If you cannot come, take cover under a piece of heavy furniture or against any wall. Do not use lifts if you live in a high rise building. If you are driving stop your vehicle in an open area avoid bridges and congested areas tsunami identify tsunami prone areas in that prone areas people should be aware of height of their locations above the sea level and the distance of their location from the coast evacuation route should be planned before to avoid the situation if a disaster like tsunami occurs the following precaution should be taken When tsunami warning is sounded the whole family along with the cattle and pets should move out to a safer place and those staying on the ground floor should move to upper floors of the multi story buildings disaster supply kit should be carried along in case of emergency stay away from rivers and streams that lead to oceans other than low lying coastal areas use a local radio or tv channel for up to date information and any instruction from the authorities floods the flood mitigation measures are given below 
delay the surface runoff resulting from the high intensity rainfall to the rivers and this can be achieved by large scale reforestation and afforestation in the hilly catchment areas of these rivers. The volume of water during the flood stage can be controlled through a series of engineering devices like construction of flood control storage reservoirs. The Damodar Valley Corporation constructed four major dams and reservoirs on the Damodar River and its tributaries in order to control floods. Flood diversion system or divert flood water to low lying areas. Embankments, dikes and flood walls are used to confine the flood water within the valley. Drought. Forewarning it is not possible in case of drought. But computer based study of the climatic conditions they may provide some idea or pattern of precipitation in the following year. The usual practice in India to combat drought it is to provide relief measures to drought affected people. The long term measures are afforestation to increase the content of air moisture, to increase the amount of precipitation, to increase rate of infiltration of rainwater, to increase the level of water table etc. Avalanche In many areas, regular avalanche ranks can be identified and precautions can be taken to minimize the damage like prevention of development in these areas, construction of avalanche sheds over existing roads and railways and use of tunnels for new road and rail links. Avalanches cause danger when their path cannot be predicted and are major hazard for skiers and mountaineers. Landslides The long term measures to control landslide is to undertake afforestation by planting trees which retain humus covered on the soil. Construction of building on the steep slope should be avoided. The cutting of the hill below a colony should not be allowed. Existing natural vegetations like forest and natural grasses on the hilltop should be preserved. Mining extensive clearing of lands for factories and houses has to be checked. Man-made disaster. Forest fires. Shifting cultivation should be banned. Burning a piece of land in or around the forest should be monitored. People must not throw cigarette butts. Sign of fire in the forest should be reported to the concerned authorities. Dead wood and dry leaves from the area should be removed. By combining satellite derived vegetation data, topographic maps, weather data and ecological knowledge can construct digital landscapes. Dam failures. Before building the dam, the government should make a feasible study of the project. When the water in the dam reaches the danger level, prospective people must be prepared to leave the danger zone. Fires in buildings. Don't keep highly inflammable liquids in the premises. When you leave the premises, put off the electrical and gas appliances. Keep fire extinguisher in a convenient place in the building. Disaster management. Disaster management refers to practicing of various management arrangements that are capable of encompassing different kinds of disaster. The four basic elements of disaster management are preparedness, response, rehabilitation and prevention. Preparedness. Following steps are suggested to be prepared for the occurrence of a disaster. A set of warning system, it should be planned so that people are warned before the disaster takes place. The people must be educated to cope with a disaster. That means they should be taught to keep a survival kit. Survival kit contains of first aid box, essential medicines, water, food, torch, radio, personal hygiene items, baby and pet supplies, etc. Thinking on practical side, mock drill training and practice should be undertaken. Response The following measures can be undertaken in case of disaster. People should be informed about the disaster in time to avoid its serious consequence. Emergency contact and operation center should be opened. Help the injured and the needy. Involve local people at all levels of activities. Temporary shelter should be provided. Medical camps, rescue teams should be deployed to look for those who are missing. Rehabilitation. The following recovery and rehabilitation measures can be undertaken. Essential service like providing drinking water, transport, 
electricity etc should be restored the people should be taught how to follow health and safety measures the victim should be provided with temporary accommodation financial assistance and employment opportunities those who have lost their family members should be consoled if there is a danger of epidemics vaccination program should be undertaken prevention the following steps to prevent and minimize the impact of future disasters should be undertaken the land use has to be planned as to reduce the loss of life and property building should not be constructed in risk zones mobilizing support of different coordinating agencies all buildings should be earthquake and landslide resistant the local community should be involved in making and implementing safety norms construction of buildings while constructing a building certain features has to be checked like location of building safe building plans construction with standard material and good workmanship if necessary there should be provision for fire safety building should be constructed in the cyclone prone areas circular or polygonal plan should be made here are certain norms that should be followed while constructing building legal norms to allow structures that can withstand and impact earthquakes cyclones etc people not to reside around factories that deal in hazardous material financial assistance from banks and insurance companies to be provided for building safe structures adequate training should be provided to the professionals who are involved in disaster management seismic shocks a legal framework should be prepared to enable the people to build such a structure which is capable of withstanding impact of seismic shocks during the earthquakes land use planning should be properly made so that the human activities in hazard prone areas should be controlled to avoid fatalities and loss firm soil is always better to choose as a site of construction of earthquake resistant buildings building should be supported by strong iron pillars and beams so that they could withstand the earthquake shocks the first requirement of a building if it is to be earthquake resistant is that it should have a rectangular plan that's all for the session thank you